Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Round interview show. Today we're joined by none other than Justin Horror. Hey Gemma, thanks for having me brother. Pleasure, thank you for uh, being here. How are you? You're looking very well at the moment. No, yeah, no run today though. No run this morning, mate. Um, yeah, we caught up, what, about three or four weeks ago. Uh, Nick, Young, Nick Youngquest is running a bit of a run club at the moment. Um, yeah, he's done a few marathons in the past and uh, he's got us on board. I just like the, the exercise aspect of it regardless. But now with a, a little bit of an added challenge with the, the marathon at the end of the year, looking forward to it. Yeah, the Sydney Marathon. Uh, there's going to be a few um, former NRL players putting their hands up to run it. You, you've done a half before, right? I've done a half, yeah. Yeah, I'm the yeah. same. I've done a half. Um, and it broke me. So physically it broke me. But I, the one thing uh, is I didn't prepare for it. Yeah. And, I, and I just like mentally found a way to get it done. But knowing that I did that, if I prepare well and do the right things, and we had, you know, off air, we are talking a little bit about it or off the potty, that's not my bread and butter either. Mm. So if I can, you know, make sure I'm doing the right things, um, your rehab wise, make sure I'm stretching, uh, it, go that's, through the program. That's the, hard, that's the process. It, it's probably not the running is the hard part. It's the process, right? Running sweet. Yeah. I, I've always been. I've always enjoyed running. If I if I was ever to do any extras like away from training, I'd you know to to tick a box, I'd go and run because yeah. mentally I can just switch myself off and and get myself in a happy place and mm. and get through it. And it looked like I was you know really exerting yeah. myself, but really mentally for me it was okay. Yeah, it's that it's that process, especially going on those long runs. Oh. Like I've done, I'm the same. I've done a half, but if you'd have asked me the, the moment I finished the half, right, you got to do this again, mm. mate. What about what me and Young? You were speaking about this. We just ran together a couple of weeks ago. What Ned Brockman did. Oh, and I go to because I go to Youngy. I go, could you do that? Because Youngy's super fit, uh, can do really good times, and uh, we're just talking about how crazy what what Ned Brockman mm. got through. Because we did like you just you did a half marathon, yeah, and then you're like couldn't do that again. And he's just smacked them out back to back Ma to back, well, full marathons. Yeah, well, like Kevin Simfield over yep. at like what what he's done, like it's insane. Like it's actually insane. Mm. Like I did a half marathon and I was like so happy I'd done it and like felt like I had this massive sense of achievement. I was like, oh, let's get the open top bus. I've go around. <laughs> I've, I've done under two hours, like mm. expecting this big parade. Like, yeah. like that's all I thought. I was like, <laughs> did you feel it? I felt it, it was about three days later. Uh, that it got me so like physically i was okay and then i was like yeah i'm all right you know get, we get home we went to back to cronulla at the time went for a swim next day i'm like yeah, i feel sweet i could do another one mm. and then two days two or three days later my hip flexors and my hammies and everything just went on me yeah i was i was about two days later yeah, yeah. and obviously you you, th you know you don't it's not a celebration like football, but you just like I had work the next day and just eating crap and yeah. all that, and then it's like, oh shit. Yeah, that's what you you eat crap after a yeah. day. You like you're just trying to get as much fuel back yeah. in your body as you can. Yeah, well, it's justified, right? It's yeah. all those calories that you've expended. Ah, <laughs> oh, a few schooners. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, mate, before we get into to all your current work and your aspirations for the future and um, this evolution or revolution <laughs> of media, we, we don't quite know what it is, um, mate, you. I think sometimes people forget you played over a hundred NRL games and mm. um, 200 over 200 professional games in both competitions. Mm. How, um, how do you reflect on that, on that career? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny. It's, uh, it's a quick little story before us, you know, when I first started at YKTR, I had people ask me like, how do you know the boys? Cause they didn't even mm. realize I played footy, but uh, super proud, mate. Like my old boy played first grade, um, you know, when I got to 100 games, I thought, fuck, you know, going, looking back on where I'd come from, uh, I, w I never made any of the rep teams when I was younger. I was always like super keen on footy, but just, you know, the the talent didn't really back it up. And uh, the reason I'm proud of it is I think I've really, you know, persevered through, um, you know, getting to where I did, um, was able to play first grade. Uh, and a lot of it's around, you know, relationships you, you build through footy as well. And uh, yeah, it, I was a bit of a late bloomer in a way too. Twenty, I think I debuted at twenty three, so I played three full seasons of New South Wales Cup and the and the OG Premier League. So um, a lot of people give up during that period yeah. as well. So I'm you know I'm proud of that. And then also the life experience, mate. Like went over the Super League, played in France for two years, and then uh, played at Shaky Wakey with a couple <laughs> of lads. We've got a couple of mutual mates over there. So um, yeah, the journey the journey was was unreal and. Uh, 
because that, oh. because uh, like you know you see some people come through and they'll get a handful of games but 100 nrl games it, it is quite it is quite the achievement. It's something to be exceptionally proud of. Yeah, it is, mate. And the th coolest part about it all, me and my dad play, both played first grade. We both finished on exactly 120 games together. Really? Yeah, exactly 120 each. So that's a cool little thing for our yeah. family, for me and my dad. Um, you know, we were only just speaking about it the other day. Uh, you talk about sliding doors moments. I know you do that with your guests and there was, there was a time where I could have come back and it was like I really wanted to come back to beat him. Uh, I just wanted to get yeah, that extra just get game, more. <laughs> and, and, and I think about it recently. But because uh, uh, he because he obviously played test footy as well, and I yeah. never got test footy, so I just there's something that I needed to get over top over top of him. But to finish on 120 each is um, uh, a cool little achievement for our family for yeah, sure. It, it is cool, um, mate. You, you spoke there about um, going over to France. We've had a couple of guests on that have referenced that sort of period. Um, <laughs> first off, leaving Australia, what did you? What were your expectations going to, to France? Um, so the, a part of my decision was to go, it was the unknown of heading over to France. Um, sort of grew up, not sheltered, but I grew up a lot around like rugby league was my whole life. So it was, you know, growing up playing footy, Western Sydney and then, when you're in the bubble over here, you know, as you mate, as you mate, as you grow older, and your mates go over for the European summers, and you meet a couple of the English players that come over or, or whatnot, you know, become close with Luke Burgess uh, at Manly, and you you know start talking about the European summers and the lifestyle, and you know all the different things that you can you can do over there. It was it was really appealing to me. So the last year before I left, I had a I, I had a, a contract to stay here uh, at another club, and then. Um, then the opportunity arose, which uh, I sort of got on the front foot because I had a couple of Super League clubs that were in and around like that were calf keen. And I told my manager, I said, no, I only want to go to France. I only want to go to uh, to the Catalan Dragons one because I had a couple of ex-teammates there. Uh, Chris Inu and Glenn Stewart had just signed up over there as well. So I was like, oh, I've got some familiarity with some players over there. But um, yeah, it was – it was everything I like wanted to experience going over there as well. Like the unknown, learning the new language as best I could, different did they, culture. Did they do all – at the time you were there, were they um, – you had to communicate in French or did they – Yeah, they had, we had lessons twice a week. Yeah. But they were very – like with our crew. And I've seen – and mm. I've, I got sent the uh, – the clips from when, when Birdie was talking about the the foursome or whatever. So in our crew, we had a pretty loose crew. So to get to – like those French lessons were hard work sometimes. And then when we're in them, it wasn't like <laughs> – Dave Taylor used to joke that he wasn't even good in English class, let alone <laughs> French. <laughs> and then we had and we had Toddy Carney and, and me and Chris Inu went to school together uh, at Westfield Sports and we did everything not to get to class. We played every sport we could not to, not to go to class and we're just typical dumb footy heads. Uh, so – you know, in this class, there was a few of us <clears throat> that were sort of the same sort of characters and we probably didn't learn as much as we should have. But the second year, I did really buy into it. Luke Burgess come over. He spoke fluent French with his uh, his mum teaches French. Yeah. And, uh, you know, being around him really helped me out and then also got a bit of a kick in the bum over there after the first year about, you know, pulling my head in and and, uh, and making the most of it. And I think I did that in the second year for sure. Yeah. Um, obviously, yeah, the... The, the French lessons. Well, I, I did French at school for a little bit and um, yeah, I used to perhaps not take it as seriously as I should have. But uh, The English guys were heaps better. At it. Like we had Jody Broughton who, who was uh, an ex uh, – uh, was he Huddersfield before he came over? No, where was Jody before Salford, he came over? I think. Yeah, Salford and Leeds, yeah. Mm. And he had some basic French yeah. lessons. So he was way more advanced than what we were. And, uh, you know, it, it would have been frustrating for him because he was he, – Jody's a good lad mm. and he, he prob was proper trying to – me and him would drive to training together and he would have a, a, a VC – the old tapes in, oh, the, in the car yeah. or, or on, on the potty and he'd listen to it on the way in there. And I was just like on my phone, on social media and like not mm. paying any attention. So he, he was in a crew with like naturally with, with us, you know, four or five um, Aussie players or players from EV who just didn't, didn't put in enough effort with it. Yeah, but – the I guess the the lifestyle um, with some of that crew, um, you know, it was probably le less football focused. Oh yeah, it, it only really hit during summer though. 
we were pretty focused to begin with because yeah. you get over it's like a new uh, it's a new endeavor. You're at a new team. You really want to impress. I think we tra- yeah we trained really hard um, going into it. Um, we were actually first equal uh, at one point, like going going into summer. And then uh, you've had Mace on the the potty before, and he you know when he recalls when he come over. I think when Mace come over, he come over a little bit later, and we were traveling pretty well. And Toddy Carney was over there, and Toddy's like, just wait till the beach bars open to the grouse, because Toddy been over there the year before. And we're like, because. Yeah, when you first go over there, you're like, oh, like this is pretty cool. Like Barcelona's just down the road, yeah. but there's nothing doing in Cane or Perpignan, nothing. Like it's empty. So um, for the first, you know, like two or three months, there's pretty good footy being played and we're traveling well. And I remember like the exact moment. It was just in and around just after Magic Round and then it all just went downhill. Um, and, then mm. we, and then we struggled. We nearly didn't make the eight after being first equal going into Magic Round, which is – for people that don't know, that that was just played like last weekend yeah. or the weekend before. So halfway through the season. Um, but yeah, the, all the uh, all the beach bars opened. Uh, everyone travels from from out, outside of France into into Cannes because it's a beautiful little part of the world. And it's expensive. The, that's yeah. where the film festival is, right? Oh no, that's uh that's Cannes. Oh right, okay, we're, we're yeah, in Cannes. Yeah. This Sorry. Court, yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, but that was you know th- again that was you know three or four hours up the road, so mm. that was good fun. Um, we had a few trips in the car. More, most of them were down to Barcelona, which we thought we were getting away with, but we weren't. Uh, we found out at the end of the year. So, um, mate, great time, some good mm. fun. The owner was pretty um, hardcore, wasn't he? He was. But he was unreal for that first six months. Like when we were traveling well, he we got we got looked after pretty well too. Like he shut down restaurants, and then you know we had a couple of team gigs where everyone got together and we had a, a big big drink, and it was good for camaraderie too. Because the French is a little bit standoffish. Because you know in the past Aussies have come over and and run a mark, and mm. up to up until that point we hadn't. And you know we'd get together and and had a few drinks and we couldn't understand each other, like half of us couldn't understand each other. But we're, we're hugging and 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 wrestling and having a good time in these in these restaurants. But we always got told um, Bernard's like he's he's a serious customer, and he and he you know went you know when things went pear shaped, he uh, yeah we felt it. Did he ever like threaten to like not pay you? Or is that just um, one of those ever yeah, myths no, that they get do. Flown, fl- uh, thrown around rugby league circles? With yeah, the, no, oh, they I- do for sure. He, um, But it never happened to me. I know it happened to past players and I think it even happened to more recent as well where like at the end of the year because we carried on a bit too much, um, we got sat down and um, I'll let the other boys tell their side of the story but yeah, I was on my last warning. Like I got given a warning and going like pull your head in. From the from the owner. And I, and I still had one more year and Bernard's like, we're just not going to pay you. And I said, all right, sweet, all right. I'll go back, I'll go back to us. This is right at the end of the season. So I'll go back, I'll come back and, and you know, rip in and um, it's not like I wasn't but I was rip, work hard, play hard. That, yeah. that was my mindset to begin with. Mm. And I sort of just you come back with a different mindset in the second year, and I think you know I think I did that. Um, I sort of left, even though the results didn't go their way as, as well as the team. Um, if I'd left the year before, like my name was Mud at that yeah. point with with a couple of the other boys, so it was a little bit better yeah. in the second year. And then you you went to to like you said the shaky wakey the Wildcats. Like, <laughs> look for our Aussie viewers and listeners, can you just try and best describe just just what it's like there so some salt of the earth people yeah like some of the best people you, you're ever likely to meet they care for you but you know there's they're not working with much are they like there's no certainly no uh center of excellence as you walk into yeah i've got to watch my words because i did a, i did an episode with kempi and and i and i was too detailed and mm. the wakey fans come after me uh but, 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 I w- but it's it's not to say like anything negative about Wakefield. It's just, it just like comparing the, it's, to it's just the, the 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 contrast, you know, like that that change in room that yeah. they have at that ground. Is, it's not even A grade level, mate. Like it, here, I played A grade footy last year with my brothers, and the facilities that we had for A grade footy in the Penrith comp, and the, and they've gone backwards from from years past as well. It just wasn't up to scratch, and. Um, the one thing I will say, talk about the fans and that, like they got – so I, I have a bit of fun with social media mm. as well. So like I got hammered on this uh, 
I love rugby league uh, Facebook page because they repost because Kempy is a big oh, deal. Yeah, yeah. I right, love okay. rugby league. Have you seen it? It's like a. I think I've, I've come across it. In yeah, my t- yeah, you would you would have seen it. So I got on there and had a bit of fun. Was going back and forth with some uh, some wakey fans and and Super League fans because I think you know that the way they perceived it. If if you if you take the what I said. Oh, um, out of context, yeah. um, you know, it sort of looked like I was hammering. I mate, I loved it. I loved it. And I will say their fans over there are as loyal as they come. Mm. Like when you talk about we, you know, I always say that we're a working class sport over here, Western Sydney, country rugby league. That's fucking working class. Yeah, yeah. Like Wakey is working class and there might only be like 5,000 people where we used to call it Mobile Rocket. It was the Rocket and uh, Bellevue Stadium. But mate, it's way more than I can hear from twenty thousand at Acol, and and they Absolutely. And, and they get into it, and I love the theatre of it all. I used to get hammered all the time because I was at the back end of my career. It's my last two years. I always say it's where, wake you know, it's where rugby league careers go to die. <laughs> which, which obviously they, you know, they didn't, they don't like hearing no. that. But it's a bit of fun, and it's said mm. between all the players. But that's what made us great together because yeah. we actually had two really solid years. And what and what happens is like with that sort of mindset that we had within within the group, we were all, no, there was no egos, yeah, zero egos in the team. So we all it's fun- sort of your um, your identity, right? Yes, we used it as a as a yeah, fuel. This is, this is us. You know what I this mean? This is what we're gonna. Yeah, hang no, no hu- one, yeah. no one wants us anymore. Mm. We're you know we're on the we're on the back end. We're, we're regarded as crap heap. Mm. So we'd play Wigan and Saints and use that as motivation. Mm. And um, I'm I'm out of all the. Teams like so you've got WhatsApp groups of players um, over the years. Like probably my two most active uh, WhatsApp groups are Wakey still and and my, and my mates from Manly. Yeah, um, because I really got along. Because like I said, we all we were all the same sort of player over there, and no one had egos. And and if we were going to win games, it was doing it together. Despite yeah. like um, playing against better teams, like you know Saints had. Way more uh, higher paid players, um, leads. You know, it was just around the corner, and we had some. We had some really good games, mate. We were, we finished. Um, I think we just missed, just missed the uh, the well, top four, or top five over there. And then by the time when I left Wakey, because I just had dramas with with the coach, we were second equal at the time. And then they just went, and it was not because I left, but just went through a bad run. Heaps, of, we had heaps of injuries that year, and we sort of fell out of flavor, but. Um, it was. I loved it. I mm. loved it. I lived in Leeds City Centre. I really got along with the boys really well. Um, the playing group was one of the you know, closest that I had in, in my time. So um, every experience was for, had its own little. Yeah, I, it was one of my um, like most hated grounds to go to. Although, like looking, but like at the time, it's oh, wakey away. Mm. Oh no, like the the field was. Like a, we we play there in summer sometimes, yeah. and it was like concrete because yeah, obviously hard. they'd never water it. It's in fact I used to always play in studded boots. The yeah. last time I wore plastic studs was was wakey away wakey, yeah. in probably two thousand and ten. Yeah, like all all the rest of my NRL career, like metal studs. But back there, and even at St Helens, all those other grounds, mm. metal. Saints Plast- grouse. It was plastic, always good plastic always studs nick. at yeah. Wakey Away. It was a horrendous place to go. I remember the changing rooms. It was like, you know, after the game, the trickle down the shower. <laughs> then you speak about like the fans. Uh, they let you know how they feel about you. Oh, and, like, they were the best. I think we've lost. We we lost the game at Wakey Away, and they were going off. They were just like giving you so much crap, and you're like, oh. yeah. Like they just it was it was ever, it was their cup final. Yeah. You know, to beat Saints, it was yeah. their cup final. You, know? yeah. you let them have their day in the summer. Their fans just loved it. They they couldn't get enough. And the, the best. Like I said, they're super loyal. Um, you know, after I did that party with Campy, I, there's like a blog. Uh, what do they call them? Like blog pages, like fan pages, fan forums. Yeah. And uh, so one of the boys told me they were hammering in me. So I went and jumped in it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and I started going back with a few of them. But I'm still in it now. And I've just like after uh, – I'll watch them and – and uh, they're going through a tough time. They yeah, just got their struggling. first win. Um, big David Fafita went back over um, and got him their first win. Big Bopper. They love him there. Um, but the, mate, they're super passionate and they're super loyal. And you know, there's all those contingents through the Super League because at the end of the day, um, you know, we're not even would maybe be close to top five sports over there. You know, mm. like rugby league is is a proper working yeah. class sport. So 
to have all these diehard fans that they're desperate to to not be relegated. Um, and I think they've got people involved with it now. But every now and again, I'll be on Facebook and I'll just you know run my eye over it. And uh, I, used to, I used to tell the boys because when with stuff would go down with the coach, I'd go, oh, I'll just. Add a little fuel to the yeah. fire here, and I used to just rip the coach <laughs> <laughs> at the time. Stare the pot. Yeah. How good. <clears throat> the, the, but to be fair, mate, there's a lot of players over there that I think personally, you know, would, would have a good dig over here. Yep. Like even, you know, a, a mutual friend of ours, Matty Asher. Yeah. Like what, you know, the, the talent and the work ethic that a guy like that lad has, like just bring him over here in a good system. There's, there's no doubt he'd. He'd make an NRL player. Matty Ashurst um, was one of the best back roles I played with. And I tell him he's he's such a – he's one of my good mates, right? He's one of those guys I'm still in contact with. And um, he's like Elliot Whitehead. Mm. That's the yes. best comparison, yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. Just super solid, um, good ball skills, uh, you know, works all day, does all the little things right. I really felt like he could have an Elliot Whitehead sort of um, uh, rugby league career over here. Um, but he's just – He's just a typical like Lancashire, like yeah. Wigan, Wigan lad, just bit rats. Um, you know, just he's he's that sort of mindset that I loved when I when I played there. Like uh, this place sucks. You know, if it sucks for us, it sucks way worse for them yeah. when they're coming. <laughs> you know, like we used, that's that's what we used to use to mm. motivate us. And uh, he was the he was the leader of it. him and Danny Kermon. We're, we're both um, you yeah, know both back rowers, so we got along. You know, your position groups, you get along yeah. with those guys a lot better too. Um, but yeah, he was a guy that could have played over you, Tom Johnston. Yeah, yeah, he was he was actually close to coming to, to Souths not long ago, but he went, he went to Catalans instead, and he's killing it out there. And yeah, a couple he, of times he had a, he had some gigs, and uh, he did his ACL twice yeah, right, around yeah. Magic Round. Yeah, and uh, but he could he could definitely have played over you. Yeah, there's a, there's a well, and that's just Wakefield. I think you know the strength of the competition there. It's I know IAG have have come in. Oh yeah, and um, I think it's. One last roll of the dice, I think. Hopefully okay. for them, um, coming in, getting involved, putting a bit of some money into it, can propel it to where it needs to be with that little bit more professionalism and, and whatnot. Um, but mate, you spoke there about um, uh, leaving Wakefield. Talk us through hanging up the boots. Like, yeah, because it, 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 it's, it's. I've spoke to a number of people about this, and they say that that's the hardest. Um, retirement to do for an Australian based or, or New Zealand based player mm. to retire um in England and then come back. Yeah. So the one thing I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure I was like set. And I had a few mates that have retired over there. So like Rennie Matu and Willie Tonga had both retired the year before that I wanted to retire. So the year before I come home from Wakey and I loved all the boys, but I'm like, you know, three years now, been away from family. Every time I come home I miss it heaps. Um I missed out on some real big like like weddings and like big birthdays around you know around whilst I was overseas and I was living by myself over there too, and um, so after the year before eighteen, I, I come home for Christmas and I went, I might just stay here and just call them up and go, look, I'm not coming back because I still had one year left on my contract. But I'm like, fuck, one, I love the boys. Um, two, I don't want to have any regrets. So I went back over there and then got about six you know anywhere between six to eight games in the season just realize not only like mentally but my body was sort of starting to like i said my preparation wasn't you know the best in the sense like like i trained hard but i just you know all the yoga pilates stretching downs all that stuff i wasn't the best at so i was like i knew like it was time to go home and uh you know once i made that decision i told a couple of boys that i was close with um and they were sweet. Obviously, they you know they didn't want me to leave. They wanted me to finish the season, but um, went about it the right way. I told I went and told um, the head coach and uh, Michael Carter, the um, CEO, and I said, "Look, boys, look, I'm done mentally, um, but I don't want to leave you in a in a worse position because well, we're traveling. We're, we're second equal at the time. We're still in the Challenge Cup." I said, uh, "If you want to if you want to get a replacement, then I'll play off play on until you get a replacement." So I did that, and then that that was like another. You know, in my mind, I felt like I'd done the right thing by the club as well. And they went and got um, Kalepi Tanganoa from Manly who was trying to get over the Super League. And then it was a nice, smooth tr transaction. I finished up, Kalepi come in. Um, and then, yeah, and then that's how I finished up. So 
it was just good to you know go out on my own terms in the in the sense where and then also 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 happy that I went back because um, I got got a little bit of a farewell tour uh, with a couple of boys um, and, and yes yeah, said said my goodbyes to everyone in England and France and then come home because I just was never sure if I was you know it's so far away when when life is life, life's finished you don't know when you're going to see these guys yeah. again so we had a couple of good nights out together um, made the most of it and then a couple of my mates come over we travelled Europe and. Did a bit of a Europe party and then went home. Yeah, sound, it um, sounds like a lot of fun. But then in terms of like c- coming back, um, you didn't you don't get the access to the um, the medical. Um, uh, the tw- did you get the 12-month medical? I think, yeah, I think it was available to me. It was I available think it was to available yeah. to me, but I never used it. Like yeah. I was lucky enough to not have any serious injuries. Like I've got some bumps and bruises now. Like I've got some stiffness in my shoulders, but that's basically down to me not doing the right thing. Yeah, so there, there was no like active like surgeries needed. There was no, no. like, oh, you'd been holding on to clean outs or, or no. whatever. No, and I still feel all right now. I just get a bit stiff when I play golf. Like my shoulders is a bit <laughs> – I can't like sort of raise my shoulder above my, my head like without – putting a bit of effort into it but um avo- i avoided contact as much as i could out in the out in the edge so yeah. not like you jamie you <laughs> great you front rollers and and getting in the middle so i was all right mate i did i was okay so i didn't have to worry about that yeah so you you have your big party you say your goodbyes did you know what you were coming back to what no. can you like so you're coming into the the full unknown yeah well so like, did the, you have while a, i was away um, my my uncle runs a like a traffic control business um it's called parking patrol so um when i come back i was like oh, i'll just go work for him it's pretty good cash it's mad cash so if you hear about the traffic controllers from the brazilian girls that get mad money for mm. the for the for the um stop go signs and that there's another version of it's called parking patrol like if you take out a street uh, just say if the if if flinders needs to get to get done here They'll block it out throughout the day and then they'll do some road works on it and then they, you know, clear out. So we've got to clear that out throughout the day. So that's what my uncle was doing. So I was like, all right, I'll just go back and do that. It's good money. And then we'll see what happens from there. Yeah. But like had no proper plan at all. Yeah, so that so there was no there was no study done. There was no no no, no, as, no real aspirations. Like I like a lot of footballers, it's just I'm just gonna keep going until i can't go anymore and then yeah. i'll deal like that's a tomorrow problem yeah I'm yeah live for, live for today these mm. these kids are so much better at it now like yeah. they're all they're, yeah, it was there available for us but I, I was just it's all my own fault anything you know like there was enough people that were studying and doing the right things you know close mates of mine tommy simons jamie bureau now work for the rlpa i uh, mean jimmy bureau went to the acp back in the day i was gonna um, you know, do that with him and study to become, you know, a PE teacher and go through and get the degree and, and I just didn't turn up, you know. Yeah. Like I had all this stuff afforded to me and mm. I just never took advantage of it. So I'm not – I'll never be a, an old bitter player. I come through this, the system when there were, there were still um, plenty, of, plenty of opportunities to educate mm. myself and I was partying and, and, and doing – playing golf with, yeah. you know, in my spare time. So Yeah, the, the, the culture is – is changing now it seems yeah. more i think you know we're, we're relatively the same age but when i ke- first came through it was like no nah. mate but now like a- everyone's doing it no i did i did this public speaking course the other day because i want to get into some MC as well um with mace because i've got the opportunity with mace mace does all these um chats and i think you go out and do some stuff with him gems so i'm like i want i want to um try to better myself in that so it was a public speaking course that we did through jason nightingale hooked it up and um, like a couple of NRL players, boys were involved in it. Like Taylor May was in it. Um, and his was basically because he just, you know, wasn't, wasn't good at communicating. So when I seen him on there and I was like, these kids are in such a better place yeah. already straight off the bat. Taylor May, like, it, might, it might not necessarily have been for you get in a podcast and or anything, you know, content or whatever, like a few of us were. Like Chad Townsend was on there um, to help out with his podcast and content and all that sort of stuff. But just seeing Taylor tell a story about like I just want to get more confident speaking, I was I love that. Yeah, I, you know, I see, and I, and these kids are getting so much better at all of that. And, and being proactive with it as well, not yep. just playing the victim. Oh, well, I'm not good at it, so I'll never be able to do it. Let's go and see if we can make a difference. And I know heaps of kids like because I grew up in Western Sydney around Mount Druitt, so I know what he's like. A lot of those boys, like especially Islander kids, are pretty. You know, you would have seen a few Islander Islander boys uh, through your time, Gemma, and they're all pretty reserved. You know, they. Uh, it, 
you know, very, very hum- – like humility is massive in, in the Pacific Islander community. So they've got to, you know, respect their parents, keep their head down, all that sort of stuff. And that was sort of, you know, I, I guess a, b- a big reason why maybe Talon wanted to do it. Um, but, yeah, that's just a, another great example of what, you know, the NRL is doing uh, and then w- what these kids are also doing by putting themselves in those situations. We're going to take a quick break from the podcast to tell you about AG1, the daily foundational nutritional drink – with all your needs in the one place. I like to look after my health and AG1 takes care of that for me. No more tablets, vitamin pills, vitamin pills, all the health nutrition I need all in the one place. Every single morning, it's as easy. Open up the fridge, scoop of AG1 in a glass, cold water, stir it with a fork, drink it. It tastes great. And it helps me know, it gives me the peace of mind that all my nutritional needs are taken care of all in the one drink. It really is as simple as that. And also anybody that knows anything about health benefits knows that it comes with adding simple routines to your day. It's not about magic pills. They're not going to work. AG1 helps me be the best version of myself by having this new habit of every single morning having that drink, I know my nutritional bases are covered thanks to AG1. A lot of athletes are now taking AG1 and with 75 high quality ingredients, it's no wonder why. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. That's drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. Check it out. Yeah. So, so you come back, you on the, you know, stop, go working for your uncle. Yep. Um, where, obviously, looking at you now, like, you're a million miles from that, mm. but it's only three years. Yeah, so three, three and a half, yeah, three, three and, and a half, half years. years. Yeah. So just like where's the the inspiration, the light bulb moment? What was the catalyst? So you have you were first uh, involved with YKTR. Yep. That's, can, you, can you talk us about how how that came to fruition? Because it, it seems like such a leap. Yeah. So when I come back from overseas, um, I was look what had been a mates with the boys uh, through a guy called Blake Leary played with me at Manly, and then we become close. Uh, he was best mates with Corey Norman, and then Normie was obviously had the crew with Ice and and Chico and that. So, like I said, with my around that time, I was just partying and doing all that sort of stuff. So we so every year, despite playing different clubs or whatever, we went to, on a few trips away together. And then I'd seen YKTR blow up while I was uh, well, overseas, like the last couple of years. So I said to him, um, when I got back to Australia, I hit up Ice. I was like, oh, do you mind if I come check out the uh, – the I've, I've seen the um, the new office. I was like, do you mind if I come have a look? I'll just come say good day, catch up for a coffee. And he goes, yeah, come to a potty. So that was um, like maybe a month after I'd returned. And we'd caught up for a beer um, before that. And, and that's when I sort of hit him up. And, he's, and so we did the podcast and then after we finished, he goes, oh, so we're going to start something a little bit different. Like we're going to do a, a new media side. We're going to get into um, talk sports. But like we want to distance ourselves a little bit more from just purely rugby league chat. We want to do like all the other sports. And that's that's what I loved. When I was overseas, I got into the Premier League. Um, I was a big American sports fan. So he goes, just come and talk like NFL, NBA and just see how that goes. And it was just like, you go in, do your thing, and and then, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's like I said, I was doing the, um, the the parking patrol, so I was like, yeah, whatever, we'll just give it a crack. And that was basically how I got into it. And now, like, obviously, you know, fast forward, um, so a lot's happened in between that, but um, there was no plans to do anything like that. Um, he We finished the potty, and he just goes, are you keen? I said, I was a little bit hesitant because I was like, I didn't have a profile. So I sort of said, oh, no one will fucking listen to me talk about NFL and NBA. Like, it's, I'm not – one, I'm not a big name. And then two, like, it's sort of not credible, right? If we talk about rugby league, at least we know what we're talking about. So they, it sort of just – it went all right. Like, I was, I, Mace was my first ever um, guest. And I was like, all right, so I need a big dog to get myself going. 
Um, and me and Mace were close from Manly and, and Catalan Dragons. And then I got Chez, Daily Chair Evans, to come on my second episode. So I got some big name footy players that I was close with to help me out early on. And super nervous at the start. Never anticipated it. No planning. You know, you got the, the book out. I would just try to fluke it. Yeah. Because that's – I didn't know any better. And then we we started the more the more reps I got, or I was like, all right, I'm going to start preparing for this because I had some bigger guests that started to come in. And then we started to branch off into different directions with different content. And then it all become um, a crazy couple of years. Like I was living with Normie, so there was content there all the time. We were doing um, just a, a probably our, our, our best content was just me, Normie, uh, Chico was living together, and uh, another guy, Simi. We were living together, so we. Um, we called our place the kennel and because uh, we all had dogs bodies so we was like 10 in the ken <laughs> <laughs> so we called it 10 in the ken and that was probably our best form of content it was just us talking shit about like yeah. what we did on the weekend um, we're going out and partying and having a good time so it all um, it all just become it become this um, unexpected thing for me obviously you know YKTR was ready set YKTR sports was a new thing and then I just went with the flow and it just Saw where it took me and then after about a year of just doing content with him, like I wasn't on the books or anything and um, I was just doing it to see if I could have a crack at it while because I was while I was doing that, I was able to work as well. So I was getting good money from the traffic control stuff and did it YKTR and then after a year, I just goes, oh, well, let's chuck you on the books and come in and take this a little bit more serious. So it was like half part-time. So I was doing a couple of days a week and then and more concentrate on content and then and then there was like three years doing it with the boys. Mm. Do you think that the the message to to people there would just to be just have a go, mm. just because it's interesting hearing you say like, "Oh, I'm nervous." You got all the reasons there not to do it, yep, or not to go out and actively like try it and almost be okay with it not working. Yeah, do you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think so, speak to so many people and they have ideas, uh, but they're like, "Oh, it won't work." Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, uh, you, you, you leveraged your position to yep. get you that, like with P big name, like Willie Mason, Cherry Evans. But yep. then I think so, so many people just, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. It's too hard. Or uh, all these, like I say, all these reasons not to, not to try, but just look where you are now. And it wasn't, you're not an overnight success. Mm. Like there was a, oh, for a sure. process there. It was a slow build there, for slow sure. Slow build, but yep. it's worth it. it. Obviously, now, it's worth it. Yeah. Well, this is like – we'll get to it, I'm sure, as well. Like this is my priority now. Like content is what I do. Like that pays my bills. And um, if I would have thought that three years ago, look, credit to Ice. Ice, it took a lot of pressure off me. He just goes, mate, don't – don't like if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So in the sense – like I'd retired. So I had some money left over. That helped. I didn't have to worry about getting paid for it, which is, you know, like I had some savings put away um, – and then I was lucky enough to have my uncle doing some work with him. But you do, as at the end of the day, it was it didn't come naturally to me at, at first, I don't think. So I did have to take a bit of a step and go like – the one thing I was hesitant was I was like, man, I'm not a big enough name. Like that's what I, I pushed back on early on. I was like no one's going to, you know, one, know who I was or – you know, even though I played a few games, you, you still – you feel a bit of an imposter syndrome when you try anything yeah. new, right? So I'm like, ah, no, nah, this, this ain't going to be for me. Um, was, there, was there a bit – with with that, do you, was there a bit of feel like I'm going to get laughed at and that and that name? Yeah, 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 for sure. But because that, that the, the reason I'm asking you that, it's not to like cause that um, like embarrassment, but it's like who cares what anyone else mm. thinks? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like I, I speak to people all the time and they're like, oh – I'm worried about what the, or I don't think I'm good enough. It's like, who cares? Like, and if you fail, who, who gives a shit? In a week's time, in a month's time, no one's going to care or remember. Or be, oh, remember. And then you might even look back at yourself and, you know, in a, in another universe, right, say it didn't work out, we, you'd be doing whatever you're doing. You'd be, mm. oh, remember I tried that podcast? Oh, mm. Well, that's what I learned. So those are mad lessons, like in the first six months. I was heaps... Um, I'd get like every time an episode drop, I'd get real bad anxiety. I'd go and read the comments, yeah. And I never used to do that as fo like a footy player because I don't know. You, it, it's like at the start of your career when you're a rookie, you worry about it. After like your full second season of starting, you're like, oh, 
who cares? Like if I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hammered, I'm gonna get praised, it's all it all evens itself out. Yeah. I had that again when I when I left and started doing content. So after a while, it probably took me about ten episodes in and uh, I got heaps of praise to begin with. Because that's what I reckon that's what happens in in this industry. Everyone's the grouse, the views are good, you're the new, you know, new, yeah. new, new form of content. And the boys already established the, like a platform. So that's what I was worried about. I was like, man, I hope I don't fuck it up for my like ATR here. So um, that was probably my biggest concern. And then um, after 10 episodes, you started to get people critiquing me uh, and uh, I'd get like, yeah, you know, scopes, it's, it's going flat, you know, it's this, this ain't it, like just talk footy. And then you got some criticisms and then after a while, like maybe after about six, six or 12 months, I got back to that NRL two years into it and I'm like just zone it all out like mm. go there's going to be there's going to be people that like you there's going to be people that don't like you just put out I realised that consistency with content is was what um, people were yearning for and you're always going to have like people that you know rip you in anything so once I once I figured that out I think it, it made me go to another preparation was big I learned how to prepare for it um, just like from footy as well, you know, when you're a rookie, you learn things on the run and you and you pick stuff up. So once I prepared and once I knew I prepared for an episode, then I didn't really care what the perception was because I like, all right, I put in the work for this. Um, and that was around when I started getting guys like um, Mark Hunt come on, Tim Zhu, um, where I had to look into other sports. Yeah. Um, Laurie Daly was a big one because I grew up being a Laurie Daly fan. So – all these sorts of guys that weren't current players, that's when it started to sink in for me a little bit that I could make something of it. And, uh, you know, and then you start to like not worry too much about the negativity and and uh, and, and again with the positivity, like just try, stay even kill with it and then the rest will just take care of itself. Do you ever look back at some of those like first interviews and just think, oh my, I did. God, I'd, I'd like that again. Yeah, I did after about two years. I haven't looked in a while. Mm. Yeah, uh, me, the, me. After a couple of years, um, they pop up on YouTube every mm. now and again mm. and you'd look <laughs> at them or hear them and just like, <laughs> fuck, that was heavy. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> that was so heavy. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then, but then also again, right, you can, out of any situation, you can, so now I look back and I go, wow, I'm so much more polished now. And yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Matt, you know what? You, it's funny, in another two or three years' time, mm. look back at this, Probably. you're like, oh, God. Yeah. Come on, what was I thinking? That? What were we doing? Yeah. Like, what was I asking that for? Or whatever it may be. But, um, mate, the, the, the whole podcast thing starting at YKTR, what, why do you think it works? Um, like with all we, of us, in, well, like do, all of us. Well, just everything about it, because obviously traditional media – um just dominated for so long mm. you had your football shows it was time slot this is where you get your news from mm. like what is it about just blokes just shooting the ship yeah talking having fun not being time constrained like what is it that you think appeals to the to the listener or the viewer i think a couple of things the authenticity of it is big uh people telling stories that probably couldn't have told on mainstream uh, media platforms in in the, in the past like the comfortability of players being able to open up to past players as well so doing this sort of stuff where they might tell a story to help out for your podcast or just in general they didn't feel comfortable telling it on you know the nines or the foxes or whatever back in the or, or on, on radio um, and then the access of it mate like with social media like it almost was the perfect sort of little window where people were getting into it and I like um, when when you know podcasts and all that hip it's just so much easier like you know if you just say for instance if you listen to radio every morning that's still your medium that you like to you listen to you jump on the triple m's and listen to you guys you sort of don't know what to expect maybe depending on the guest you got an idea of it but like if you listen to the, the buy around you sort of know what you're going to be talking about or how you're going to interview like you've you like that style you can get your specific styles like if you listen to my podcast with mace level you sort of know um, what sort of style you're going to listen to and, and what type of content you're going to be engaged in. So um, just a number of things, mate. But I think, yeah, the access of it, social media helps as well, heaps, you know, clipping up and, you know, putting all those clips to, to gain more attention towards it. And then, and then it, you know, people sharing, being able to share content. Like back in the day, radio wouldn't be, if you, you know, before you had your phones growing up, you'd yeah. be like, oh, you've got to listen to 
you know, um, Fitzy and Whipper or um, yeah. You, you, but you missed it and then that was it. It was done. But if you can go, oh, I heard this grouse episode from the buy round uh, five episodes ago, go listen to that. And then, oh, yeah, that, for, that person listens to that for the first time and now they love it, you know? Do you think um, we've still got some room to grow podcast? Do you think it will, yeah. it will be – do you think there's even a, a possibility of it completely taking over from – the, yeah, the, I think so. What you would say is is the mainstream. Yeah, I think so, and I think you know you you see that already with uh, like TV shows becoming subscription models, um, having the and radio where you can not only listen to the radio now, you can listen to it back on a on a podcast. So I think he's got a listener up with you yeah, guys. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, so same thing. Like if they miss it on Triple M, they miss in the morning. You would have missed that in the past. Now you can still listen to that back right on on the listener app. So. Um, I think you know the the radio stations are understanding that. I think um, yeah, people people's time, you know, they don't necessarily get to lock into a certain point of their life. Everyone's doing so much stuff at the moment. Sometimes you you need to to go back and then you know just say if you're on a long drive or a, a flight. Sometimes I'll go back and listen to podcasts on a flight and whatnot. Do you think even with um, obviously with the, the social media side of things, uh, the individual is controlling the narrative? They're controlling their content. Yeah. Do you think we'll see a move uh, away from the traditional media outlets and players will become their own media channel? Yeah. You, I think like you're sort of seeing it now. Like there's a few that are doing it, probably bigger in the NBA, um, like the Draymond Greens of the world. Uh, yeah, you control the narrative then, right? Mm. And then you – know, And they almost don't speak. because no. Because I, I guess the positive thing about what I've found with, with, with this is that um, we control the headline, yeah, and you know there's no um, seduce and betray, which um, unfortunately can happen. And you know, it, with other outlets, it could be this is what we'll cl- we'll speak for an hour, mm. but then okay, we'll clip this bit up and we'll put that out. Where this is, you know, people w- what you see is what you get. Well, the beauty of this too is through a lot of it through those relationships I said at the start, like. I like we play, I do this potty because you got the runs on the board and then your name your name is solid with everyone that's done this pod. Like you've had ex teammates on and you never do the wrong thing by them. Whereas in the past, those media outlets have sort of painted someone in a picture that they didn't want to be perceived by. Right. So once you get the runs on the board and start doing this sort of content, it's you pick you start to pick and choose. Yeah. Like, what what would I do? Even though it's a paid gig, like I come and do this just because, you know. I enjoy your podcast. I, you know, you've always done you know, you've done past teammates before, and and that's what we want to do. Obviously, at levels too, because we want to start doing guests as well. And and you know, the narrative has got to be that we look after players when they come yeah. in here. Same sort of thing. We do. We, you know, we, I've done I've done some content before with people over the years um, that would have got unreal views, and then they've checked themselves. And I won't even say who it was because yeah. it would give it away yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah. right? I know what you're saying. Um, and then that and 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 they've gone, mate, just. Get rid of that last bit, yeah. and then we've got rid of it. Um, obviously, easy, and I and it does, wouldn't bother me in the slightest. So once we got rid of it, it was, it was you feel you feel better about yourself. And guess what? That player, um, big name player, he you know he tells you know word of mouth, same thing. Like I said, you know your the way you're perceived with his teammates now. Um, you know, not, might not necessarily exactly say what the story was, but he said, yeah, you know, Scope looked after us. He, he got rid of that, and he said he was, and you know, and and that's how you build trust within all the playing group. And, and that's why you, you will keep getting all the guests. Yeah. Do you, and do you think there's less agendas here as well? Yeah. In, in this as opposed to like I think, you know, the fan, the average fan at home can see that there are agendas being played out mm. and some are known, some are mm. you know, unknown. Mm. But I think the viewer is starting to see through that a little bit now. For sure. For sure. And – uh the biggest thing with me is glass houses. I've made a heap of mistakes as well. So if I was ever to ever, um, you know, interview someone and like, didn't, there's no way I'd want to take advantage of that. Like if put myself in their shoes, yeah, because I've done some shitty things that like, or I've done some stuff that I regret. And um, yeah, you, you can you, look if you pay enough attention, you see the good ones, you see the bad ones. Yeah. Um, so obviously starting at um, at YKTR, uh, they they give you your first shot, but then. You, you you choose to to leave. Mm. Can, can you talk us through just how that uh, eventuated? 
Yeah, so it was there, a bit of a- Sorry, it, I, I'm, because I think it, it when when this all news was happening yeah. in, in the sort of podcast community, I can remember I was in, we were in um, Hello Sport and it was like, oh my goodness, yeah. have you heard all this? It was like, yeah. whoa, like, you know, it was, it was big news. In, it was pretty heavy in, yeah, here for yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I'd never spoken on it because I like, one, there was a couple of reasons. Um, like I did like a little video um, talking about my reasons, but you know, there are things behind the scenes that were factored into my decision. Uh, main one, and I said this, and this is a hundred percent. This is first and foremost. Like I've got a young family now, so the, my main reason was about. So you know, once I found out that I was having Lenny, um, I was like, all right, fuck. Like I like doing this with the boys. These guys are my mates, but. Can I do this for the rest, you know, rest of my life? Can I be get a percentage of sponsorship and and you know be the the larrikin scope in in the YKTR bubble, or, you know, or should I try to make something myself? You know, like I've got a bit of a platform through the boys. Like let's try and make something myself. So that was the initial decision, right? And then you, you go back and forth. Like these guys gave me a crack. Um, we had obviously good good relationship with the boys. So one thing you know after a while was I in those three three years I learnt what. I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. So we had a few conversations um, around that, around what, what content I wanted to do, um, sort of how I wanted to be perceived. I sort of been the the degenerate gambler, um, um, you know, take the piss, get on, you know, get on the piss, all that sort of vibe. And that was going to change with family, yeah. you know, naturally. So like I couldn't play that character as much anymore. Like I. Yeah, you know, let people know that there's, it's still in there. I'm capable of, you know, good yeah. night out and a punt and all that sort of stuff, right? And I don't shy away from that. But I just wanted to – just needed a little bit of a change. And could I do that there or, you know, did I have to go out and do it by myself? And, um, yeah, look, we had a couple of conversations. Um, there was heaps of changes happening around YKTR at that time as well. So, um. I let I let I let let him know I let Ice know that I was a little bit frustrated with a couple of weeks leading into it, um, my decision to leave, uh, and then you know and then once I'd made my decision I was like yeah I've just got to get got to get this done because one thing was we we're just about to roll in the NRL season I'm thinking about all right what sort of um, show am I going to do uh, I had no idea like what I was going to do I was like. And this might seem a bit uh, it, like into myself, but I love Pat McAfee and what he does. At uh, he's a, a an NFL podcast, and I was looking at it, go, man, could I pull this off? And I'm like, it's that same thing we talked about before, right? Where I'm like, fuck it, just have a crack. Like, if you plenty if of it, reasons not it, to. Right? If it fails, it fails. But like, you know, as much as I love the boys, like uh, there was only so far I could go at YKTR. So I was like, it's my own thing, you know. There's more accountability. Me, accountability. I mean, to get the sponsor, as you know, you got to get sponsorships. You get all these people involved. And I'm like, all right, I'm. That sounds. That feels like a good challenge. And mentally, I went through all this stuff in my head, and and that, and then I come to the decision. So once I told Ice, he's obviously devastated. Um, you know, and I guess not only you know, he's probably seen the videos. Um, the timing. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't a fan of the time, but also for my from my end, and I had to get I had to get something going as well. So. Yeah, made the decision. Um, it was you know a, a tough week. You would have seen the videos. Um, mm. There was a couple of them. He, you know. Is it how how's the landscape between you guys now? It's non-existent. It's, yeah, so we're still not we're still not chatting. Um, so he, he please block me. So we we don't we don't chat at the moment. Uh, he, he removed me from all the groups immediately. And there was like a part of me that understood where like. No, I've known him long enough. There was no, I knew there was going to be waves. And this is why I didn't want to speak on it as well. Like I just wanted to get through – I needed to get levels going first and foremost. Yeah, that was your priority. That was my priority. So, you know, people were asking me questions. I was getting hammered. Um, like my missus was getting like messages in, in her DMs and that's why I love her. She's a country girl. So it's like once she didn't love foot, like she doesn't know footy, but she doesn't take herself too seriously. So during that period I was like – I was getting hammered and that didn't bother me. But – um, you know, when she started getting a few messages like, "Oh, you're right, you're right with all this," and they started bringing my daughter into it, mm. and it was, it was just, it was ugly. It was an ugly week, um, but I knew I expected the there was going to be some sort of reaction just based off um, knowing him long enough, and then knowing like the content that he does as well, right? Yeah. So, um, so I just went, "All right, put my head down, get all this sponsorship involved," and I'm like, "Fuck, all right, well, like what sort of show?" Well, because. 
okay, it's all well and good to to sit there and think, I've got this idea, I can do it by myself. Mm. Mate. It was a shock. There's a lot that goes into it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, production, uh, equipment, guests, platform. Yeah. Like, partners. You know what like, the beauty of it is? Like, as, as much as all the chaos that, you know, when he, he did the co a couple of videos about me, it, it brought people to me, which was yeah. grouse. So, um, but like, then, but have you, how did you set up levels? So, like, how did that, like, because, yeah, like so I, I, had, I'd envision, like, I wanted to do content exactly what, like, I was like, man, I could, I can be doing this, but it can be better and it can be on my terms at my times and I get sponsorship involved and that comes back to me. So, the big thing was, like, me and Mace had mad chemistry. So I knew, I knew I wanted to do it with Mace, yeah. but I also had to convince Mace because Mace had been doing his own thing in the past and Mace was loving how it was going at YKTR Sports. Like he's, the big thing is like I'm the, Mace was doing it because of me, but I also had to convince Mace like, all right, this is the idea of what I think levels can be for us. Uh, we didn't have a name for it, but I'm like, we'll, we'll start our own platform and then – I, I essentially I still had to get him on board because like you know you know Mace Mace is a walking podcast like content king so like realistically he could do it with anyone so I had to convince him that to do it with me um, and we and we already had a show and we we're doing well at YKTR Sports on the sports show but I'm like man let's do super consistent like let's do re review preview and with our connections through footy we haven't you know got a, got around to it yet but we'll do some guests and I've got this whole new plan of a new show that we're going we're building towards i was telling charlie about i just want to get it out there first before i let anyone like sort of know the context of it but um um yeah i had all these ideas of content and i was like i'm gonna try to have a crack by myself and then you know sort of do the do the model that you're doing or um it'd be fucking so much easy, easier if you, if you come with me mate so um you know during that period Put my head down. So Mace was keen straight away. Bang, first box. Tick. Keen, but it's it's a big unknown, right? Yeah. Especially when you think, it, like financially, if you were, if you were on the books there, like you're starting all this off yep. from scratch. There's, I'm assuming there's no finance coming in. So you've got to go and, you know, speak to potential partners, but with no actual hard date. They want to see... They want to see they want to see numbers, right? That's why it was hard, mate. Like they, that's they, why they, to, that's what they want to yeah. see. How many numbers have you got? Well, we're just starting afresh. Yeah. It, it, look, it did help I, it, for sure. I had data from YKTR Sports, so you can look at it and go, all right, like that's YKTR, that's YKTR Sports. They've got an audience. How much of that is because of scope, or how much can you know? It's because you know Justin Horrors on that podcast was just at their audience. So there was conv some convincing and and negotiating, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed mm. like that process of it. Like once we got actually got into that, and we started speaking um, like numbers with with brands. Like you know, it was really super grateful because and then obviously the credibility of Mace as well. Like when Mace is involved, it's like all right, Mace is you know look at look at this resume because it's, it's hard for me to present my resume to people. But like when you got Mace's resume involved, so that was obviously a massive tick early on. And then I just got into it, and like I said, you know during. There was a that couple of week period where it was the news of the podcast world, and I, I caught up. I'm, speaking of the Hello Sports Boys, super grateful for them, and 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 those boys were really good. And Kempy from Bloke in a Bar. So when it all went down, because it was the talk of the podcast world, boys reached out straight away. So um, Tom and Eddie, in their own Tom and Eddie way, like, <laughs> what's going on? Sort of having a laugh about it. Um, and then, you know, going through as much details as I wanted to to let in on and, and uh, we were, cause we were going to do we, – we were doing about even together. And so straight away when I left, I was like, all right, how is this going to be perceived by everyone? Like – because my name was Mud, right? So after those videos, like I was getting hammered, my fucking missus was getting hammered, my um, inboxes were like traitor, <laughs> fucking snake, <laughs> dog, all this stuff, right? So I'm like – how am I going to be perceived by everyone else? Because, you know, they don't know the full story yeah. about like what's going on. So I call, I call um, Tom and I have a chat to Tom and we're about to do about even in a couple of weeks, our first episode. And, and, and during this time, we're supposed to be shooting for about even. Uh, that's their, the, obviously their punning show. And I was doing that at YKTR regardless. I signed up on like December the year before. And I go, mate, I, I fully understand if, you know, 
fuck, my name's Mud at the moment, mate. Like, you probably don't want me on the show. And Tom goes, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> he goes, come in. He goes, we've we got to shoot this week. We're doing the intros and all that stuff. And I said, are you sure? Like, you know, the punters and dribblers might, you know, might get into you when on, on the first episode. He goes, mate, don't worry about it. He goes, you know, I've known you long enough. So, fuck, I was like, grouse, thanks, boys. Appreciate it. I had no income and that was, that was, that was a paid gig from them as well. Um, that was before I got all sponsorship done, right? So at the, that was my only form of re- revenue for a little bit. And then same thing, Kempi. Kempi called me um, and we'd done content over the last three years together. And he goes, any way I can help, um, you know, I think you're going to do, you're gonna do great in your new thing. Um, like if you need any help with anything, let me know. Um, if you want my studio, both the boys offered my studio, Hello Sports and, and Kempi. And uh, oh, we're like, sweet. All right, so that – potentially that takes a lot of pressure off. Like I'll get two, two of these guys and Kempi goes, as soon as you get going, I'll come on. Second episode, he was on. Yeah, and we got like 25,000 views, right? So we got all Kempi's audience come over and I couldn't be more um, grateful for him. And he goes, the show he does on Fridays, I think you've done Packer Up Boys. Yeah. He offered that to me. Like he goes, do you want to do this show just to help me out? And I was like, um, I don't think he even like, you know, even if I like was to follow through on it, but he just wanted to help. Yeah. So I was like, those – those two brands, considering that they're, you know, like we're doing this, right? Could yeah. be perceived in the old world as competitors. Yeah. Both those two guys were like, both those two brands were like, we want to help you out. Mate, they, I echo your words because they did exactly the same for us. Yeah. So that was massive, mate. So that like potentially, right, there's a little bit of revenue there. And then plus their two brands could help me build back some credibility. So I just went, all right, put my head down, get the get the company sorted. And I thought, look, there's no way I can't get in a back and forth with these videos. I just got to get my uh, reputation be the narrative, and that helped heaps. So then, Hello Sports get me on, Kempi comes on ours, and then slowly people started to drip feed, and and then I think you know there'll still be some people that are filthy at me from leaving, but I think you know those two brands in particular really helped out in the initial process. Yeah, and just going back to that. Like, okay, so you got Mace on board. You've so you're one third owner. Yep. Of of level, so you, you obviously offer a, a third to Mace. Yep. Uh, but again, Mace is a, a walking podcast. But are, are you doing most of the yeah? So the, the hard yards in terms of getting there, the could, because it's a business. Like, I, I, what, you know, I speak now about you know, oh, you do the buy around. It's like no, it's a it's a legitimate business. We're going to do invoices and you yeah. know tax returns and all that sort of jazz so it's not just it, it goes from passion project people just shooting the shit to actually yeah. know it's a business now yeah well uh, being in the world for a little bit i understood a little bit how it worked and like what we could get from this so i pitched it to him um yes and no one like mace gives me free reign to um like i have all the conversations but like tab were on board because he was an ambassador for him already so Tab were like, yeah, we're keen. Let's get involved. So then I just had to get the number. Like yeah. we go through a negotiation p- process, which have a chat with them. They've been great. Um, and you know, I pitched to them my uh, plan for the whole thing. Uh, same thing with BSC. He's been an ambassador to them for ages. So like Mace didn't have to do anything, but he did everything, right? So like his relationships were the, were the reason we are where we are now. Without yeah. Without them – it, I, I, I would have backed myself to go and get sponsorship, but it would have been so much harder and so much longer. So Mace initiated the relationships and then it was up to me to sell them what we were trying to do and then also making sure, like my biggest thing is making sure we deliver on all them. So I'm in constant communication with them. You know, I come up with the plan for the show every week. I'm, you know, me and Mace, is, we, we talk to him about ideas because he's got ambassador roles elsewhere as well. Like we're all doing – like we, we do a couple of things away from, from levels as well. So making sure that we've got a plan at the start of the week every week so he knows. And then he's been he's been great. So um, another big one was Diamantina Media. So that, that's the Hello, um, the Batuta Advocate guys. So when, when it all went down, they're like, let's have a chat, come and shoot it from here. And the reason we chose Diamantina over Bloke and Hello Sports initially is we just wanted to like have our own little – like if, if we've – if we'd done the potty with the boys, I lo- like respectfully, I, l- I love them offering it to us. It would have been looked like a Hello Sports or a yeah. bloke and we just wanted to distance ourselves from that. So we want to have our own vibe within the background, a bit like you've got here now with the buy round. It's, and when people see this backdrop, they think of you boys, whereas I just wanted to differentiate and, and have that for ourselves. 
So Diamantina Media, like which is the Batuta Advocate, they reached out and they've been great as well. We've got a good relationship where, you know, good communication about, you know, using their studio and whatnot and, and there are deals that go in place with that. But um, it's been great, mate. It's been good. It's uh, it's it's this tough. You live we live in the invoice world now. Yeah. Uh, and there was three months of no pay, mm. nothing coming through. Savings got hammered. Um, felt like we're doing content for free when we're not. We had these. We have an agreement set up, yeah. and, and the money's going to come. But until the money comes, like, and it only just come recently, it was like, fuck. It feels like we're just mm. talking in front of a camera for free here. Mm. So, um, you know, once it all comes to fruition, and you know, now we're all on a, you know, we've got, we've got ourselves a salary and we've got, you know, regular income. Yeah. Take a breath, drop the shoulders, life's good. Mm. Um, so you, you've sort of, you've branched out uh, as well with levels with your with your golf show. And yep. You've had some of the game's biggest names. Can you run us through the, the, that idea? Because it, it, it's great. Yeah. Like it, it's a, a great environment. Well, to bring an athlete into and get some content. Yeah. So the so what I realized um, a couple of years ago, out of COVID, I started playing golf a lot more because you know at one point golf soared during. It was one of the only, one of the sports that made a lot of money during yeah. COVID because it was one of the only sports that you could go like you could still play two. Um, one with a mate and go out and play heaps of golf, and the other one was just exercising. Like a lot of a lot of sports decline because you can't play in groups of thirteen versus thirteen on a footy field, right? So I was playing a little bit of golf, and then I was like, "Yeah, I was doing okay in the on the guest podcast, but I was like, sort of want to differentiate myself. Like, sort of seen, um, you know, what Kempy Kempy was doing his podcast. Hello, sports boys were doing their podcast, and um. I was like, how can I be like just a little bit different? Yeah. A little bit different. And yeah, what's your point of difference? Yeah, what's my point of difference? Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll enjoy playing golf. I've got heaps of mates that love playing golf and a lot of them big names and a lot of guys are footy players. So I said, why don't I just go play golf with them and see what that looks like? So yeah, we went gone out and played golf. And the, the I think the beauty of it is um seeing the uh the reactions of the of the, because like you can be pretty controlled and sort of know what you're gonna say in, in, in a podcast like this. When they when they lose their shit after hitting yeah. the ball into the water or whatever, that's the content. So it's not necessarily about the best golfers. That what we realized after a while, did an episode with um, um, Kieran Foran and Daly Cher Evans, and they were my halves back at Manly, and the eps like they were all for golf. Like they're off, they're a twenty five you know thirty handicap, and you know, I played with Sam who was off three at the time, and that was a good episode just because of Sam Burgess. But people love the Foz and Ches episode because. We were so bad, and and we we're heckling each other, and there's banter. So that's the that's the new vision for the the new show. So instead of playing with one guest and just doing an interview type, it's all about uh, four, uh, two ball Ambrose groups and taking the Mickey out of each other. Yeah, and shit shit golf more than good golf because I'm never going to be like I'm not gonna get, I'm not going to get the golf purist that comes and watch my show to for a beautiful swing. My swing's awful. Yeah, like and I get people tell me that all the time. So. We we were when we were filming some content. I was like, all right. It, initially, it started off as I want to get some, you know, just want a, a new pla a new um, some new scenery for a podcast, like for a guest podcast. And I'm like, that's where the content is, the banter. Yeah. Well, that, that's where you get all your your clips, isn't yeah. it? For you know, and, your, and your views and your impressions. Yeah. Is that's that, what is flies, that, and that's what people want to see, right? People putting shit on each other. That's it, mate. With, with that, um. For for all of your shows, just for the listeners and and viewers, how how much work goes into it? Like you're saying that like this is this is your baby now. Yep. You're not reliant on someone else to come up with the rundown. Like talk us through your role in that and just how much goes into that. So what I realized, um, and this is again watching other people's content, Mason told like your preparation. Preparation is key for anything, right? And I've seen Kempy is the pinnacle, like Kempy's views and what he's doing and starting the podcast game, the OG and what he does. And one thing I realized is if you're going to talk footy or you're going to talk about anything, you've got to know what you're talking about or else the audience will just fucking zone out. If You, you can fake it till you make it for so long. <laughs> so I realized I've got to watch – if I'm going to do a review and preview show and break down games, I've got to watch footy. Yeah. I was fluking it before, like for the first year or two, I was watching highlights. I was watching KO minis at best, at best. Friday, probably watch a Thursday night, Friday night game, and then just fluke at the rest. Now I watch every single game, 
So that's preparation in itself, right? And that takes time, you know, like you fucking misses on the weekend and wants to get away and do things. And even if I do miss a, a day, I've got to go back and watch it. So then I'll go through on Monday, for instance, before if it wasn't for this game, I'd Monday morning get home and I'd go through all the show throughout the morning. I'd even start writing. So I'll write notes in my phone yeah. over the weekend to prepare. So if just say Thursday games in particular, Thursday, Friday is like. Oh, you can forget about them. Oh, like, mate, like what oh, happened? fucking yeah. what happened in that <laughs> Crocus 300th, you know, like I, and I love watching the post games and all that sort of stuff. So I start putting notes in my phone and that all becomes into a plan. But I'll go through and it might take, you know, if I want to rip into it, um, I can get it done in the morning from, you know, 9 to 12. Brief run, run shot, like an idea of how I want the show to go. I'll message notes um, to to the boys. So Luke's with us as well. He was from YKTR. So I'll message Luke and, and Mace. This is how it's going to go. This is the run sheet. Um, these are the topics. Um, these are notes that happens in, in games. So like sometimes does, does Mace, Mace have any or, or Luke have any input into that as no, well? Or they leave it all with me. That you, that's all uh, oh, right. Okay. Yep. So that's your that's I guess uh, part of your job description yep. is to is to come up with a, a rundown. Yep. And I, you know, I, I like doing that because I, you know, always these boys used to joke around and call me the itinerary, you know, like because I always, <laughs> I like to have shit planned. Like that was my, that's my bread and butter. Like, I guess get, for you and you, like that's why it works so well. That's together, why right? it works because mad. if there was two Masons, you'd have all the content in the world, but no one to film it or organize it. Yeah, but, you know, you know what I mean. So, well, my, so the way I try to plan a show is I want it as prepared as possible. For Mace to smash it out of the park super organically. Yeah. So like I'll give him an idea of like the topics or I know how we will feel about a certain topic mm. or a player. Mm. Just suggestive questions yeah. or push certain buttons. So, and that comes with time and chemistry in that too. Mm. And, and me and Mace knowing each other for, for ages and knowing what his personality is like. So, you know, when I come up with the show uh, and then and Mace is good as well. Like when Mace wants to know about shit, he'll just go like what do we, what do we got or what's the main topics or whatever. So I'll give him an idea. And I think what's taken it to the next level is Mace is watching all the games now too. Like, same sort of thing. Um, we realise same, you know, Mace is organic, um, takes a mad, but um, he's he, he's the what he's put into levels is made it go to the next level. Yeah, um, part of the pun, but um, yeah, he's realised that same same sort of thing. Like that's where that's where our audience is going to be. They're diehards, and uh, I think it's super authentic. And, and that's why people love it and that's what goes into preparation. So then I'll plan that and then also, you know, with the guests, as you know, mate, so you, you're trying to find out as much as about them. You, the easiest thing is to do Wikipedia, yeah. <laughs> right? And then after a while you start going, all right, that's yeah, not going to do it. Yeah, there's more. To, You've got to find yeah. out more. So I might mm. message teammates or I watch old content or, you know, you know, you start to figure out little bit, bits and pieces to make the best possible um, guest content where you're like, I like the idea of throwing them off a little bit. Oh, I didn't, you know, didn't yeah. think you were going to ask <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, and then, and then I think, you know, that's where, that's where the the beauty of the content comes from. Uh, where, um, where can levels expand into? Where, where do you, what do, you, what are your your goals with this, with this now? Look, at the moment, we're we're able to pay, pay ourselves a wage and a salary. Like, and it's, I'd say it's part time for all of us at the moment. Um, we've got a couple of gigs on the side where. Um, you know, it helps out, but I wanted to uh, re like working at YKTR, I realized what worked and what didn't work and going too wide too early wasn't going to work for us. We had to nail the the review and preview. So that's what I wanted to nail first. And then there's different layers of guest content that we want to do, um, but I want to make sure that we can nail it. So everything's about expanding the brand. Uh, we will do um, like – we're going to bring out merchandise and sell merchandise, but I didn't want to be a merchandise. Like it wasn't about selling hoodies and hats, yeah. but something that, you know, people can, you know, when they chuck it on, they can, you know, think of us or whatever. Um, I, I'd like, I like the idea of doing trips away um, and, and stuff like that. So, you know. So what would that, what would that look like? Yeah. So. Are we thinking uh, round zero? Yeah. Round away? zero uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, I think Robbie for, Farrah's for, got a model. Yeah, so would that be like uh, sporting experiences, basically, with with, with you guys, with us guys, sort of piece yeah, it together, yeah, and then we vlog the whole. So a part of the process ah. might be where we come out and we vlog it, we give them the experience. So you know, like nothing better than a trip away over the boys, but it's pretty cool. Like you know, if you, you remember, when you sit around and have a few beers and tell old yarns about you know what happened back in the day, and like you can like, if we record it, 
like fuck, you can watch it back every now and again. Yeah. So the nostalgic feeling of that. So doing trips away, I think Robbie Farah does um, something similar where he takes. Um, he's got a company where he takes people away on trips away. But it might and it might not necessarily be as big as Vegas. It might just be live golf in Adelaide next year. You know, yeah. something like that. So me and Maze, you get the experience. Certain amount of tickets. Um, your group of friends. Yeah, make it, exclu- make it exclusive. Exclusive, yeah. And then we'll, I'll take care of everything. Like my, I'll come up with a business plan for it where we get you know people involved, sponsors involved. Um, and then, you know, try to chat to – use our connections to speak to someone at Live Golf and figure that out. Like that's just an example. I'm not saying yeah. it will happen, but, um, yeah, that's what we want to do. So this and, – and then, you know, let it happen organically, grow it mm. without trying to rush and do too much at, at the one time. What, Make sure we know nail, nail what we're doing first. Mm. Would, you, would you look to bring in um, all the shows that I guess levels are just the host of? Yes. So like where you're not necessarily – there for each and every one of those like ex- expand the the library of content that you, you that you produce that's what that's what excites luke so luke come from white gtr with us as well and that's like where he sort of wants to go down as well so at the moment we don't have our, we're, we're working out of diamond tenure but I, ideally having our own studio space in, in the in the right time um but then you know there's outgoings that come with that too because at the moment everything's just coming in so we haven't had to spend anything out yet so then finding the right space and then also – and then that comes with credibility. But, yeah, if, if there were guys, for instance, uh, there's a current player um, that we've had a chat to that Luke's, you know, help, helping out and he's like, oh, I want to understand the business a little bit more. It would be nice to be in a position where you could go, all right, he'll come in and, and work under our umbrella and sort of do a little bit like um, Don yeah. Tina are doing, like the 80-20 split and, you know, we'll take care of revenue. But it would be almost like a love us and leave us sort of vibe. That's the way I, I'd like yeah. to pitch it to him where um, come in and learn the – Learn how to do a podcast, a bit like how you did with the Hello Sports Boys. Um, mm. You know, a bit like how we're doing with Diamond Tina, learn how to run the business side of it. And then once you're fully capable, because this is what Diamond Tina said to us as well, once you're fully capable, then we'll give you our blessing, go do, yeah. go do your own thing. So, um, yeah, that, that something like that excites mm. Luke more than like – that would be his expertise. But, yeah, we'd like to get to, get to that point. Yeah, I think um, a, a lot of sports people like the idea of – like being the controller of their own content, whether it be, you know, probably the the social media aspect probably isn't enough. Mm. But given like their own show or their own opportunity to to talk about what's going on in the world of their chosen sport, like they just need a platform to do it, right? Yeah, and, and it's not easy the, figuring it out, right? It, well, you know, the, the, that's that's the yeah. like a, like I said to you mate, at the at the start of it, it's like. There's plenty of reasons not to. It's not easy. Mm. It doesn't necessarily come to you. Yeah, but but th- there's an there's an audience there. The hardest thing is finding the Charlies of the world and and the Luke's that put in the work yeah. um, behind the scenes because a lot of us can talk uh, or you know you learn how to talk mm. and you can be create that profile. But finding the creatives behind the scenes, like with us having Luke there, he's unreal for us. So. Um, you know, to all the editing and, and all oh, that, mate. that have to go through, like, fuck, it's torture. Mate, well, I tried to do it for a couple of hours one day and it gave me a headache. I mm. nearly passed out. Well, mate, when we, when we were starting off the buy round, I, um, you know, we had this idea how it would look and it's crazy how it started to how it is now. And again, like I say, in two years' time, looking back, we'll be like, this is shocking. Mm. But they were like, oh, we, um, we need to film it. Mm. I was like, no, nah, it's podcast mm. we'll just record the audio and put it out there and they were like you know youtube and i'm like put it on youtube mm. no one's no one's no one's watching a podcast mm. charlie tony you off your head they were but like, you're never going to grow away eh, unless you're like they, well they were like no no there's a massive market there for, on youtube and then all like for because i'm personally i'm not on social media so mm. they I, I was like, no we don't need that it's just a podcast just a pure pure podcast it's like that's why it works as well with like you and Charlie as well because I, I think if you could, it's there's authenticity about not being too into it as well. Yeah. well, And not understanding that world a little bit and having some like that's why the balance works mad with me, Luke and Mace where like Mace is – he we understand that he's the face. I'm the guy that controls and makes everything work and then Luke polishes it all up to make us look good mm. at the end of the yeah. day. He makes sure he makes sure the vision that I have comes to fruition. Mm. So we've all got our roles, and it all works well. Yeah, that that well, it's it's not too dissimilar here, where it's like, okay, well, this is what we all bring to the party, mm. and it sort of we're all different parts of the jigsaw, mm. and we piece it together, and we, you 
come up with the the, the buy around, but without each other, we'd be, you know, I'd be speaking into me phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd you know, have it set up on, yeah. in front of this yeah, water yeah, bottle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, not even. I'd just be <laughs> audio in it. And, you know, the no. Oh, so I have to start that again. Sorry, everyone. Um, yeah, just and then if you want to listen, just. Uh, send me your whatsapp number and i'll whatsapp it out yeah. to you because i'm <laughs> god knows how it works but it's um it's such it, it is so interesting that like i think like i said i think more sports people can do it and i know that that's what we're that's what we're looking at doing here is become become a channel yeah and become a, a platform for for others not necessarily about you know me and charlie sitting on talking midweek matters or me and you talking having a guest on it's like we you know we can we can look to bring on um all the talent to, to yep. talk about about their journey and i'm sure you're you're in the same in the same boat looking to to expand it because there is there is the market there and i, I don't think it's going to eat each other no either like there's like you say people have got you know going away from those traditional medias it's like oh, i want to listen to that like and not not when it's on I want, I want to listen to it at, at some point. I don't want to be, you know, if I'm listening to, if I like a, a certain radio show's breakfast talent and what they generally talk about and and the, you know, the, the avenues that they go down. Mm. I like that, but I don't drive between seven and nine. Mm. Yeah, you yeah, know? true. Like, yep. Yeah, that's the, like the accessibility of it all, right? And, and um, the beauty of it, like are you, how many people, I don't know, you probably see it as well where like, you, they've got the rankings of you know all their favorite shows but also they're able to listen to all the other shows mm. so like at the end of the day too if you want it like if you're going to do this and this is what keeps pushing you to be so you don't get lazy with it you're making sure you put out like i said the attention to detail and, and planning for it is that yeah we're all in the same um we're sort of similar doing the similar things but if you want if if you want to keep make if people want to keep listening, then you've got to put in the work. Yeah. It's like anything. If, if you get lazy and you get complacent with it, they'll just stop listening. Yeah, so it's yeah. up to you. The accountability is well, on you. Well, that's it. And it's if, not necessarily about, oh, I hope Jammer doesn't fucking um, – they don't like his podcast. Nah, fuck that. Just make sure your podcast is good and don't worry about anything else. That's exactly right. That's that's exactly right, man. That's it. You, you're the – you know, you're in charge of it all and yep. you'll you'll determine whether it's a, a success or not yeah like it, it's on you and i kind of i kind of like that it's not just you rock up and you get your x amount of dollars to to do the show it's like no no i've got an a vested interest a person i've got i've got skin in the game here yeah like so it, it's on me whether or not i i make it work so mate you've got um all things happening with levels business owner content producer content planner all these other aspects that come into it you've got um plenty of stuff in the pipeline as well can i ask you what, what else fills your days you spoke about um potentially being an mc yep um but but what else is, is taking up your time um so i've been doing some work oh, so well, I, thanks charlie as well actually I, I caught a game for triple m last year um so now i've i've uh, i've gone to the other side mate I'm, I'm at sen now doing some radio stuff with them but i enjoy doing that one it, it ticks two boxes as well right so you get to you get to call a game you're part of you know been doing some radio stuff but i'd be watching that game and planning and doing my show as well so it's the perfect little um side hustle for me i'd say at the at the, at the moment um and then i'd so i've just been doing some radio stuff which it's it sounds it's very similar but it's they are different worlds a little bit. They're they're a little bit separate. So um, every uh, so every Thursday I do a pick show. Um, so at the start of the week it's it's level stuff, and then and then at, at the end of the week it's like radio potentially radio stuff. And I've been doing a show with James Magnuson every Saturday morning um, with him called The Mowers, and that's good because it's different. It's not all league as well. We talk a little bit about um, uh, other shows and. Um, Missile's an interesting cat too. The, he's, the he's, swimmer. The swimmer, yeah. yeah James yeah, Magnuson, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, so he's a cool dude. He loves his footy. He loves yeah, yeah, massive he loves Bulldogs. Bulldogs have, yeah, you yeah. Ever, have you ever had him yeah, as a guest I've, before? I've yeah. Not on, on here. I've met him at the, the Bulldogs a yeah. few times. Yeah, he's Mate, he's a diehard wacky. Bulldogs yeah. fan. Yeah, he is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he is. Um, so that's cool. Like I do that every Saturday morning with him now for the rest of the year. Um, and so that all meshes together nicely. And then, I, fuck, we've got a young family. So yeah. I spent heaps of like – my life's changed in the sense that you know, I always knew it was going to go a different direction, but 
I just try to spend as much time with them as can as mm. I can. Also, trying to I, I know that routine with exercise is really important. So if it's not you know catching up with with you and the boys and, and doing the run on Tuesday mornings, it's playing a little bit of golf a couple of times a week. Not only because I'm like I'm addicted to golf now, like it's more like. Yeah, we said before. And so I used to drive the buggies and screech around and and rush around and try to play golf as quickly as I can. Now the exercise uh, component of it, and I'm um, you know, getting a little bit better each day, and uh, you know watching heaps of golf content as well. So, um, so good work life balance. I've got a great also, balance at the yeah. moment, mate. And, and then, that's and that's a part of doing my own thing too. Is like having that freedom with the level stuff mm. to go, all right, I dedicate this time. I know exactly what I'm going to do at the levels every week now. And then um, I'm a little bit more uh, – more, I've got two shows that I've got, got with the radio and then I've, all, I've got, I've got the, the tick of approval from the missus to play comp every Wednesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I, play, I know I've got that every yeah. Wednesday no matter what. And then if I've had a good week or, you know, she's – she, she allows me to, I can get another game in. Mm. But I've got to be doing the right things at home and looking after Bub and, and making sure, mm. you know, I've given her a couple, you know, two, two good days in a row where she had taken the pressure off a little bit because, um, as you know, mate, like it's – you're in and out a lot. If you're doing content and you, you – know, even sometimes when I'm at home, I'm not fully, fully there. Like you're trying to like post content, repost content, message people – you know, speak to the speak to the brands. Oh, you like what's going yeah. on? What do we got coming up? What do you want to do? Um, well, I guess that as well is good for you, knowing. Okay, well, if we bring on another show, like this is the sacrifice I'm going to yes. have to make, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And you, you you can say yes or no. It's not someone dictating to you, mate. We're going to need more from you. Mm. Yeah. Well, not not ideally where you can just say, look, I'm this is I'm maxed out here. Yeah. This is, I've this I've, is I've got an idea. I, there is wiggle room to do more if I wanted to, yeah. but it's a, it's a, I, it's I make that decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the beauty of having your own thing. Yeah, and I'll or I'll sacrifice nine holes on yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. and that, I'll live with that. Right. Yeah. No, I think golf would yeah. still stay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, mate, um, we've got uh, three questions um, for each guest that we do for everyone that comes on the show. This is uh, we want to know how you feel, but you know how I feel. Like a two ease or two. So big thanks <laughs> to two ease for this section like of the that. show. Um, Matt, if football didn't exist or you hadn't have made it, what do you think you'd be doing? Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I like. I like this question. I had a good think about it as well. I think. Yeah, obviously, um, it meshes with sort of how I was. So, um, and how I am now. Love my golf. I reckon maybe a golf caddy. Golf caddy. Golf caddy. Yeah. Like grass expert, club expert. Yeah. So a couple of things, right? Um, always felt like I had pretty good footy IQ, but I just couldn't back it up. Like I didn't have the talent to back up my footy IQ. So caddies essentially the same thing, right? They understand the course, understand what's required, but I, I don't. I know I don't have the talent part. So I couldn't be a professional golfer, but maybe I could be a caddy because I enjoy my early mornings. Uh, I, I love preparation. Uh, of you know the itinerary thing coming back to it. So um, at one point, Stephen Williams, uh, who was Tiger Woods caddy was our highest earning New Zealand athlete too oh, all the way up until like 2010 so maybe yeah maybe maybe a golf caddy mate would would coaching not interest it I know we're going off track here yeah coaching would coaching would like like, it, like now I know you've got the you're busy but would yeah is I'm, it oh I did the uh, the coaches accreditation course um with the NRL that's the um you still got to go through all the process of it but I went and did um a session with them to just get a feel for it because it seems like you've got the attributes to do it. Yeah, it's the assistant coaches are more appealing to a lot of ex players yeah. than than uh, than the full time coach. Like, you, you know, Jammer better than anyone. There are different f- kettle fish the head coaches, and and my dad coached junior footy and all the way up until uh, reserve grade coach for Wayne Bennett at the Dragons um, back in the day, and he loves it. He that was when he finished playing footy to go into that. He, um, he, he didn't miss out on the the locker room feel mm. when you when you're coaching. And I, I think that's what a lot of players miss as well, being in the locker room and being around a, a group of men and you know trying to achieve something. But um, fuck, it's stressful, mate. Yeah, the most interesting person you've met, not <clears throat> not necessarily the most famous, just just one that that you find really interesting. Well, this is he's he's famous now, he's super famous. But um, fish, follow the fish. Uh, Paul Fisher, do you know who I'm talking about? The no. DJ, Charlie, would you know who he is? 
Yeah, Arm um, Lou oh, was in right, it. Okay, that yeah, guy, yeah, right? He's yeah. a DJ. So back in the day, he used to hang around the boys in footy circles. So he he hung out with like a few footy players. And we, went, we used to go to Bali for a couple of years. Um, and I went, we went over with Rennie Matu and Willie Tonga. And um, this guy called Fisher was over there. And he was – at the time he was doing like you early YouTube content. Um, he was like a, a parody sort of surf commentator and he used to just go take the mickey. Anyway, because he was mates of Ren, he would hang out with us every time. I, didn't, I, wouldn't, I don't know where he lived at the time. He was in between Gold Coast and Bali and he would just sleep on our couch and that all the time. But like even before he'd become massive, I've never seen someone control a room like him. So we had all these <laughs> footy boys over, right? And we'd be in a villa and, and as you know, as, as a lot of people know, it's like footy, footy central off-season Bali. And Brad Best has probably gone a little bit too early, but it's generally in the off season <laughs> yeah. where everyone gets over there. And we're all sitting around, and I can remember it, right? So I remember everyone in the room. So at the time, there was uh, we had a bit of a villa party. Um, it was me, Renny Matua, uh, and then he obviously, uh, Willie Tong was there, Johnny Sutton, because they were close. So it was a bit of a Souths mixture para one. And because um, we were a, a bit of the party villa, uh, people knew that we would have pre drinks at ours. So at one point, like Frankie Pritchard was there, Chris Inu, um, Sean Kenny Dow, Jared Rory Hargraves, the Roosted Boys have found out, Boydie Cordner, would all come over and we were just having pre-drinks. And I remember Fish just for about four hours, it's the most I've ever laughed in my life and no one else said a word except for Fish. <laughs> <laughs> he was showing us all highlights of his content that he was doing uh, and then um, – he was bagging everyone and he was like ripping he was ripping into every like he was ripping into the island boys in the best way he was ripping into us he was ripping into ren uh, and then he become this superstar dj now where he like he's at coachella um he's at uh, uh what's the what's the big one glastonbury over oh, yeah, there. Yeah. like he he's the main he's the headline dj now and to see how far he's come from this guy that was – he stole our scooter for like two days. Wake up in the morning <laughs> and our scooter's gone missing. I'm like, Ren, where's my scooter, man? So I'd have to jump on the back with Ren and, and he'd just come back in two days, like not, not even living there, just sleeping on our couch. And now he's one of the biggest DJs in the world. So um, even if he hadn't – even if he hadn't become like a massive DJ, like that time in Bali when we got to catch up with Fish was as good as it got. Some big personalities in there for him to be controlled. No one said a word, yeah, mate. That's brilliant. No one said a word. All the boys were just pissing themselves laughing. So he was hilarious and he still is and he's killing it. So That's brilliant. Well, I think that just about wraps us up, mate. I um I want to say massive thank you for for, for coming on and telling us about your story. Wish you all the very best in the future with levels. Um, and mate, just a, a quick one. Um, you know, it, it can get financially qu quite hard, and we're on tough times here. That's why the heating's not on. Yeah. Um, Char Charlie's, you know. <laughs> Charlie's adamant, mate. We can't afford to put the heating on. So yeah. you know, even though we've got a, a studio, we you know we, we we pay the rent, but. No, no heat and bills. So <laughs> I, I am absolutely freezing here, Charlie. By the way, so. <laughs> no, it's all good, mate. No, mate, we really appreciate you coming on. It's been a, it's been interesting to to talk to you, and I think it's, I think I've, I've I've mentioned it a few times. Big lesson there for anybody to to just try. Yeah, and you know, there's other universes out there where you, you start that that podcast and it doesn't work out, mm. and you, it's okay. But at least you tried. You had the yeah. balls to try. Um. You had the courage to try, um, not just to start it, but then start on your own as well. Because that that it's it's easy to just to work for someone else, and and who knows may, what may happen in the future future with you. You know, Mace might go off in, in another direction. Yeah, and that and that yeah. and that's it. It might not even work levels like yeah. you know we've got the initial first year done, but who, yeah. who's to say we you know at last it comes down to the work you put in and but, preparation. But mate, I think you, you you be proud of career your career, and then you're proud of well your football career but then proud of what you've actually managed to achieve so far and um it's a bigger step than what most people undertake so i think that's absolutely fantastic and uh wish you all the very best in in the future mate and Cheers, hopefully mate. you can uh get me on your studio with a nice uh <laughs> warm one maybe we get a studio together eh? we save some bucks mate i'm gonna have to put the kettle on in a minute it's <laughs> fucking freezing all right thanks for cheers, listening brother. everybody cheers